18. <laughs> Well, I didn't think it was that funny. I wouldn't but. think it was that funny so, either. <laughs> so this is take two of the Two by Two podcast. I'm Danny. I'm Harold. And we are from Burlington Baptist Church, and our sponsor is CrossFit Northern Kentucky. Um, for, for those of you watching or who, who watch on a weekly basis, uh, a couple of months ago, I spent I spilled some coffee on our soundboard back here, and we thought we were free and clear. And now we're realizing that the ghost of the coffee buttons – is catching up to it's us, coming back, coming and back. Uh, the buttons seem to be just kind of doing whatever they feel like doing. So, um, there's an election going on today. There is. People are voting, and you are tuning in anyway. Yeah. So thank you. We know <laughs> viewership. We, we know your your mind is divided tonight if you're watching this, and uh, so we're. I think we're scheduled to be on at ten seven thirty. Seven thirty. And so you know results are just starting to come in, and yeah. so uh, we'll have a little bit of Bible study, and then we'll. Then you'll get the results. Yes, yeah, and um, like I said, if our viewership might be down, but we know one thing: we do know at seven thirty, we won't know much, but we probably know where the state of Kentucky is. And yes, the, <laughs> you probably figured that one out. <laughs> yeah, a while ago. But so where is everybody else? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's it's you know, I won't say a whole lot about it, but it is. I think it's cool every day as I come to work here or to the barber shop. To see those people kind of standing out there and exercising their right, and you know, yeah. hopefully it's a huge voter turnout. You know, either way, it's bound but, to be. But yeah, it's pretty. It looks like it is. Yeah, I mean, it seems like every place has been really busy. I went to my old stomping ground this morning, Kelly Elementary School, and voted down there after uh, my dentist appointment. So I, I voted before lunch, and it wasn't bad. So yeah, I, I waited. Took time. Mom and Dad went down there, and they were there really early, and there was a pretty big line. Well, I got there, there was probably only. 10, 12 people, which yeah. is pretty good. So it's good. Yeah, it's good. You want to pray, Sam? Lord, bless this time, and uh, we know this is an important day. Bless the election. We pray your your uh, your plan will play out. We know it will. We we pray that uh, righteousness would be exalted today. We pray for those who uh, will be discouraged. Lord, we know that lots of people in in America are going to be discouraged this week, and and a lot of them are going to be happy and. And yet we know there's division, and uh, we just pray that we could come together now and accept uh, the will of the people and uh, love each other. Lord, as believers, we know you call us to love each other, even our enemies. Help us to do that. Help us to guard our tongues and uh, just uh, just love one another. Help us with that. Bless this study. Lord, teach us some things about suffering and how we deal with it, how we encourage one another during difficult times. And uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we are on, like like the podcast, we are on round two of Job's good friends. Round two. Yeah, questioning him and and, uh, and and finding out, you know, and telling him all the things that he's done wrong that have put him in this position. Yeah. So, but it starts off with, with Job kind of, kind of woe is me mm-hmm. uh, which you can kind of understand, but he's a typical, typical man. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, he's covered head to toe with, I mean, he's already lost his family and everything bad enough terrible but now he's covered and miserable and his skin hurts he itches and just oozing and and so yuck and then he's got these <laughs> friends and they're just pouring it on yep. and uh he's defending himself and they're you know you mentioned they, they call him windbag again eliphaz there in round two uh the, does a wise man answer with empty counsel and feel himself with the hottest wind Windbag, windbag, windbag. Full of hot air. Yeah, yeah. And uh, man, they don't they don't let up on him at all in round two. They they maybe even go a little further. And again, they continue to say you, you're suffering, so you must have sinned. You're not even getting what you deserve. You're arrogant. Uh, they're in chapter fifteen. They're like, well, you got some gray haired people around you, and we know more than you do. And so let just you just be quiet and listen to us. <laughs> and uh, and so you know your own words condemn you. Uh, and then, so they, they poured out on him and, uh, and then he says in chapter 16, you are a bunch of miserable comforters. <laughs> you, you aren't helping at all. If you came to help me, <laughs> you are a terrible. Yeah, you're doing a terrible job. Is there no end to your empty words? When are you going home? Because this is not helping. And, and so there's one thing we, we got to learn. If we're going to show up when someone's hurting this, is go there to, you know, to be an encouragement, uh, it's not the time to uh, to pour acid on them if they're already right. in a mess. 
And, uh, and so we, we certainly, even apart from uh, all the theological stuff, we if we want to be a good friend, we, we, we show up and, and uh, try to bring comfort. And uh, a theological lesson is not, you know, when you're in the midst of despair, it's not the time for a, a theological punch in the, in the mouth. <laughs> no. I, so, you know, I kind of was, as you were preaching on this, and, and I, we talked about it the first go around of this, of this podcast, but there's a couple things that you had said in here on Sunday that, that for me particularly kind of hit, hit me in the mouth. But um, I always think of the chapter 14, the very first verse, man, of, man born of woman is short of days and full of trouble. I think that's a pretty, that's a pretty good, you know, uh, yeah. a verse to think about is, is your days are short, but there's a lot of trouble. Yeah, and we're, we're all going to have our, yeah. we're going to have good days and bad days, yeah. and uh, you know, uh, a lot of people. I mean, we again, we're election day, and it's going to be, a, it's going to be a fun night or fun maybe week this week for some people, and for some they're just they're going to want to jump off the building. Yeah, uh, I, I mean that, we get so caught up in certain things like that, but. We know there's going to be troubles in this life, and yep. we're we in a fallen world. Uh, we have evil desires ourselves and bad motives, and this is not our home. And so we had to we had to understand that Jesus told us as followers we, we're, we're going to have tribulations. Take yep. uh, take heart, take peace. I've overcome the world, but uh, and so until we get to heaven, mm-hmm. it's going to be tough sometimes. Right. So you know, Eliphaz when he when he starts to talk again. He just dismisses everything that Job just said, right? He tells yeah. him he's full of hot air. And then he says, uh, should he argue with useless talk and words that serve no good purpose? Yeah. So hey, I heard what you just said, and now I'm going to now I'm gonna give you the business again. Yeah, yeah. And, you know. and so Eliphaz is probably the oldest, mm-hmm. and then he kind of here talks in verse 10 about his gray-haired and the elder are with us, <laughs> older than your father. So we, we have more experience than you. Right. So shut up and listen. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and 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 not that our elderly don't have more experiences. Right. Uh, you know, your dad's got more experiences than you, and there's times when you need to shut up and listen. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that they don't always have. I mean, right. it, We can't always figure God out and put him in a box, and, and that's what these guys are trying to do. Uh, do you, you know, as you as you're preaching, of course. You know, there's a lot of times that I'll think of stuff while you're preaching up there, and that I don't get a chance to ask you, or I'll forget by the time we get in here. But, but as but as you're looking, you're looking through this. Do you still think that Job, without skipping ahead, do you still think that Job's attitude about God is is where it should be? No, you know he he misses it sometimes. Okay. Yeah, and and again he's hurting. Right. And I think God is patient with him, and and uh, you know Ella Elihu that. The fourth friend's going to show up towards the end, and he's he's really going to call out these friends and Job just for some of the the nonsense. Right. And uh, he's a little bit arrogant too, but yet, uh, <laughs> but yeah, they say some things that's right. and uh, you know, Job's always kind of saying, "I want an audience with God. I want to answer. I I want to present my case." And again, we know that uh, he's not done anything to deserve this, and if someone accuses us of something we we all get kind of defensive sometimes right. we're like listen look, look. and i guess if if i had lost everything and you were trying to say well if you confess your sin <laughs> I, i'd be defensive too you yeah, probably and uh i don't want to be vindicated and right. and so but that's what job 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 wants to be vindicated he wants god just to step on the scene and say hey guys you all are wrong about this right uh, and and we know god's opinion of job he's blameless upright feared god and so we've got all those things going on and uh you know i heard someone i don't know if it was alistair Begg or someone saying you know we we live sometimes like we're at the playground and, and we're in the battleground right and we got an enemy and he's attacking us and right. the enemies attack job and uh and now these friends are being used by the enemy to further attack him and uh and so uh now i've kind of wrestled with you know how to preach some of this i mean we we know some of this is bad advice and uh, and so I, here's what I done last Monday. I just started and just started in chapter 14 or 15 and just started writing down some things that I thought, wow, I don't think I should say that to a friend who's suffering. Uh, yeah. You know, you're a windbag. You, you're getting what you deserve. And and when you kind of read it like that, you you see some things and 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 hopefully it'll make us think. You know, when's the right time to? Is this true? Right. Am I certain about this? Uh, is this going to hurt more than it's going to help? And 
and uh, we've talked about this a little bit. I mean, you, even with your kids, mm-hmm. there's a right time. I mean, if they've been in a wreck, it's not the time to. I told you you shouldn't be driving that fast. Yeah. yeah. Seatbelt. You know. <laughs> Later, you're going to talk to them about right. that. But, right. but uh, the, the right time, and this is not the right time to, for them, like I said, to, to pile on. And, uh, so let's bring this forward some. Yeah. Okay. Um, looking at church history and some of the classes that you had to take and some of the classes I had to take. There was a large contingent of churches, Protestant churches, that if you were, you know, if you were going to, if something was bad was happening to you, your church was telling you, well, you've obviously sinned somewhere. So yeah. let's get this. So you don't want to be that church. No. Because no. that, you know, now you're, now you're the three friends. Yeah. Who, yeah. who are just telling you all the things that you did wrong while you're going through this this period where you're mourning. I mean, you know, and if you think about this, we don't necessarily know. I, I mean, I don't. You you might have, have read something about it, but the, the time between the first chapter of Job and the second chapter of Job where God says, have you considered Job? Now you can yeah. put, those, put the, you can hurt him, just don't kill him. You don't know the period of time that's going through there. So he hasn't had a real time to mourn before yeah. he got sores and boils and all this other stuff yeah his wife hasn't had enough time yeah. he's we know he's had at least seven days to sit with his buddies yeah you know in the tradition of so you know all this is extremely fresh and you've got three guys who are continually going hey look what did you do yeah your kids are and that's the one part i mean that sticks out to me from last week when when he says well your kids are obviously gone because they've done something i would have I ought to punch that guy yeah you know yeah, <laughs> yeah awful. i don't want to but i mean i would have been like you <laughs> And so, you, you know, sometimes the church gets accused of right. of kind of piling on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, we we want to, to minister. There's a time to right. mourn, and we mourn with those who go through hard times. There's time to teach later. And uh, if, if you're going through something, I mean, you should examine your life and say, is this, you know, what what did I contribute to this, right. if anything? And uh, But, again, we, we know the backstory here, so it helps right. us a little bit to know that, uh, it, it's it's Satan and and uh, there's a spiritual part of it, and so I want to be careful not to be so dogmatic sometimes. Right. Uh, be gracious. Uh, listen. You know we talked about. You know we can use our tongues for. I can build you up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can tear you down. Right. Uh, we can do that in fun sometimes, but but we can do it <laughs> harshly. Sometimes. Well, yeah, we, we you know we kid around a lot with one another, but. But I mean, yeah. I, I believe, and we haven't really had too much of this between the two of us in the time that we've we've spent together. But if, but if one of us was getting sideways, yeah, the other one, would, hey man, yeah, you know, let's sure. let's get this so, let's I get mean, this squared away. Love each other enough to do that, right? Uh, and I look at you know, and and, and we, we don't get to talk you and I except for like this about a lot of this stuff. But I look at this section of this book, and I remember, you know, you know, we talked about my history with this book of going. This is one big section of book as a believer when you are trying to minister to someone or you're trying to just be with someone who's going through loss. You, If you don't have anything good to say, just shut up and sit yeah. there. Yes. And so I've talked about that a couple of times, you know, especially early on in ministry, yep. just, just wanting to say the right thing. Yep. And, and fix it and fix it. You want yeah, to fix it. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's you know, that's, that's my issue sometimes. Yeah. I, I'm like, how do I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I know you're hurting. You tell me how I can help you fix yeah. it. And sometimes you just can't. Yeah. And if you yeah. think about uh, uh, maybe a visitation or something that somebody's passed, you don't, you don't remember what they said most of the time. You mm-hmm. remember that they showed up. Right. And uh, that's all you ask is right. when they showed up and you, you got so much going on, all the weight on you. That uh, you know, you know, some people want to say eloquent stuff, and I mean, awesome. Yeah. But you, you're probably not going to remember. Right. But you're going to remember they were there. Yeah. And that that's the key is is just being there and not trying to figure it all out. And and we want to do that, but but that doesn't bring healing. And uh, and so we don't want to be these guys. And uh, and so again, there's so much we can learn about how we just how sharp our words are. Right. And uh, I mean, uh, e- even this week, just. Uh, <laughs> so so sharp, and we, right. I just you know, we scratch our heads a little bit, saying, "Why would you say that to someone who's lost everything?" Right. You know, I had a buddy this week who who is going through a loss, <clears throat> and we talked the other night on the phone for a while. And um, I always feel different about telling some. Well, you know, they're in a better place. 
Well, that's great, but that doesn't mean that you miss them any less yeah. and that the adjustment of them being gone is any, you know, yeah. it's just one of those things. And sometimes I think, you know, he, when, and I don't think he's going to watch this, but uh, it's one of those days where I just kind of just, he just wanted to talk yeah. and I let him talk and he told me about the, you know, making the arrangements and all this other stuff. And, you yeah. know, yeah. I, I didn't really have anything good to tell him other than, you know, you know, I love you and I'll see you, you know, to lay out and everything yeah. else but yeah and i mentioned a couple times so that's a uh, practical application of what you've been talking about yeah. anyway where i was just kind of like yeah don't say anything just let him because it's it. been a short time seven sons three dollars i right. mean you've lost your whole i mean just the just the the brevity this how hard that would be right and then trying to defend yourself and say i I, I wasn't the reason for that right I, and i mean if you, you you know if you look at the whole thing of course you've broken it down pretty well it's kind of just a full-scale attack of his buddies who, yeah. who I think had the best. In, and, I mean, that's the yeah. biggest thing. You have to look at this big picture. I think these three guys had the best intentions to come yeah. in here and mourn with their friend. Yeah. But now it's the full-scale yeah. <laughs> full attack of all the things that he's done yeah. wrong. And, and you know, it's so it's such a good reminder. It's just to be careful. Because, you know, how many times have you went to, like, go do something for your wife, and you go in, and you open up your mouth and say something just – All the time. Hurt. All the time. And you're thinking, man, I came – I came home with good intentions, and man, I I did take me but a second. I blew it yeah. with that smart whatever, that yeah. terrible comment or that critical, <laughs> yeah. you know. And you don't normally these guys, yeah, they showed up and right. they didn't go there for that. But then they kind of got in the heat of the battle and thought, well, you're gonna listen to me, buddy, because I know I know more than you. And uh, and you can't expect, and if you're in the position of Job, they can't expect him to kind of see, you know. I think a lot of intent. Yeah, people people misinterpret intent sometimes. You know, I was trying to help when you, and they probably were, but someone in his position, you know, I can't speak to losing one child, much less ten, right? Yeah, and you can't expect a person that in that in that position to understand. Oh, well, what you meant was this, but what yeah. you said was this. You know, that's and that's, I find with with me, that's very difficult sometimes, yeah. because my what I say, well, that's not the intent. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know. Yeah. <laughs> Just a couple of the things yeah. I mentioned is, you, you know, when it comes to suffering and, and some of the things about why things happen, we, we don't know often. Right. And uh, we got to be careful being dogmatic about it. And, and then from scriptures, there are certain things we do know. If, you know, if you're, if you're cheating on your wife, I know that's wrong. Right. I'll just speak it. Sure. You know, or you, you steal in or you're, yeah. If we know clearly, then, right. then speak it in love mm -hmm. and, but the things that we don't know. And so uh, I, I think that I've been reminded about that and, uh, and and just how you can use your tongue for for healing instead mm -hmm. of piercing. And um, Yeah, I mean, it, but you, yeah, I mean, you can't go to someone who's, who's, who's suffering and you don't know what that, you don't know. Everybody kind of handles that differently, and, and God has made us individuals. You know, it, it gives you the answer in here to how to do it, but everybody gets to that point in a different way. So unless it happens to you, you know, maybe you just maybe your friend just wants you to show up and sit with them and doesn't want you to yeah. find out. You know, maybe yeah. just sit with them. Um, and you know, like I said, I like to apply this, especially being the oldest book, to see how it it'll apply today. The the one thing that you said about the you know, the two ears one mouth, I mean that gets me every time because I you know I just want to talk it away. I want to let, yeah. let's get to the bottom of this. Let's get us a solution and let's yeah let's hammer this thing till it's done. Yeah, and 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 we we just got to say in this political season that we're in, uh, people are so opinionated <laughs> and uh, get guard yourself. Yeah. I, I mean uh, we're to you know even if someone's your enemy, you're to love them. Might not agree with them. Might be voting for somebody different than they are today. And uh, but even in that, we we our unity in Christ is more important than than our unity with other Democrats or Republicans or whatever. We we're united in Christ, uh, and he he brings us together. He brings Democrats and Republicans together. And I, I know some would argue, well, not, not that uh, we, we can be united in Christ and show love for each other and. Uh, I mean, Jesus modeled that. I mean, he went to sinners, and uh, 
reached out to him in love. Well, you, th- you think what you're talking about is, is something interesting, too, because, you know, and it, it seems to just get amplified every four years we have a presidential election because you're also voting for senators and some other stuff. But I am friends with people who aren't believers. Yeah. The most important thing to me is is my is my faith in Christ, right? Yeah. And, you know, in my family. I can. How can you be friends with those people, right? And then have somebody who, if you, I'm a Republican and this guy's a Democrat, well, we're not even friends. It's just silly. Yeah. If and you think about it. So we got the political <laughs> stuff, and then this year we got COVID, which yeah. brings another dimension. And uh, of course, I've said a few times, I, I you know, I don't like masks. I hate them things. I, yeah. mean, no, I don't know anybody that likes them, but uh, I, I like to be able to be with other believers, and I don't want to be a stumbling block. And so uh, we get to deny ourselves sometimes. For the, for the, I mean, Jesus gave his life for our good. And, uh, you know, Paul said, I don't eat meat if it causes, I mean, I like to eat meat. I, I, <laughs> if it causes your brother to stumble, you right. give it up. If right. I don't like a mask, but if it causes my brother to stumble, I'll put it on. I, I think we got to get keep counseling ourselves that way and be reminded of some of those things yeah and then and then uh before we you know this amazing declaration that job said i know my redeemer lives uh again that that was so rich uh he speaks of of his redeemer stepping on the earth and one day he's going to see his redeemer and he knows his redeemer's god and i don't know how much he knew of how Jesus was going to fulfill that. It, uh, it would seem like a lot. But he had a right. certain assurance. And and God is spoken of as the Redeemer of Israel. And, and so th- there are some references to that. Uh, but but to say that the Redeemer lives and he's going to step up on the earth and then I'm going to, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to die now. Job, Job knew he was going to die, but, but I'm going to see him. Right. And so he, he has some understanding that, the Redeemer is going to come, and that He's going to see Him one day. It's just amazing. I, we we don't know him all all the details of what Old Testament saints knew, uh, but they had some revelation that that God was going to come to the rescue, and He would bring the ultimate vindication. And uh, I, I just think that's so neat because, like you said, this is probably the oldest book written, right? And here He's got some view of. Right, that there's a there's God there's coming. there's a redemption for the for for him and for for the human yeah. race coming. Yeah, and so even if he didn't get vindicated in his life, ultimately he would. Yeah. And, uh, another thing, you know, and, and another thing about this book too, once you once you kind of get into it, and and I, and I always think about it's very difficult for me sometimes to look at this and go, why don't they just go reference? Or, you know, well they didn't have nothing, they didn't have any kind of scripture written down at this point to no, look at. Yeah. No. Um, Moses could have been in the process of writing Genesis for all we know, you know, as far as this book goes. So all they have is what kind of what the knowledge that was imparted on them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and, and things that have been passed down, which is really amazing that Job's faith is that strong. Yeah. You know, to yeah. have. And he says some things that are right. You know, the yeah. Lord's given me, given me all this and right. uh, he's going to say some, uh, I mean, in the last several chapters, just about the vastness of God. And they, they understood, you know, he holds the, I'm going to talk about it maybe in a couple of weeks. He holds the, the clouds. <laughs> it's full of rain, and we fly through them in the airplane, and we don't we don't see <laughs> what what's holding the rain. Right. I mean, God's He's just so big, right. and so they know some things. I mean, they uh, they know some things about the vastness and glory and and power of God. But uh, they He had a a glimpse of redemption, and so we come to the New Testament, and you know Romans 12, vengeance is mine, says the Lord, I'll repay. Again, we always feel like, like Job. Job felt like he felt like he needed to be vindicated, right? And we feel like I need to make this right. Yeah. And God says, "I got it." Right. And uh, we had to say, "Okay." Well, know. when he when he says that to me, generally go, "Okay, well, where, what do you need me to do then?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, it's like literally nothing. I got this. Yeah, I don't, down, yeah, yeah. I don't need your help. I, I created yeah. the whole world without you. I'll yeah. be fine. With so it's a little bit of problem. what was going on with Job. <laughs> right. I think is yeah, sure. Is uh, wait, you guys don't know, right? I wanna. I gotta straighten this out. Even if I die, I gotta straighten my. I gotta preserve well, my name. So you know, and we talked. You know, and, and I said something. You know, and, it, and this book kind of did it. And, and I'm, you know me, I'm all over the place with study and stuff. I've got stuff that I do for school, and I've told you I was reading a, a book I got with, from a guy you don't like. But, uh, and and then the stuff that you're preaching on, something just hit me. You know, 
I hear a lot of people, I think, in my daily life talk about, well, I've got to get my stuff right. I've got to rectify before yeah. I can come. Well, if you wait for that, you're going to yeah. never, ever get there. That's right. Because and, and that's one of those things about turning it over. It's like, God, I want you to turn over my life, and I want you to make new wine or you know, put yeah. new wine in the new wineskin. And, oh, by the way, while you're doing this, what do you need me to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Just well, let me just let me work. One other statement I, I made Sunday is, uh, you know, what ultimately matters is not what men think about you. That's and, right. And we we're so concerned about that. Yeah. And uh, what matters is what God knows, and He knows the whole story. Yeah. And uh, if we can just rest with that, sometimes we don't have to defend ourselves over and over. We right. we know, hey, God saw, and that's all that matters. And mm-hmm. and even in faithfulness and ministry and life, it's. God sees, yep. knows the whole story, and if others gossip or lie, or, it doesn't matter. God, sure. God knows, and so we just let it go. And ultimately, Job, Job will be vindicated, but because God knows, and uh, yeah, he will not see. He might not see it here, but he's going to see it when he steps into yeah, you know, yeah. into eternity in the right place. Absolutely. Yeah. So next week uh, we're going to finish up this third round. <laughs> And uh, Job's going to maintain his integrity and uh, tell us how to do that and uh, just explain some things he knows about God. So, Thank, I want to tell you thanks. Uh, thanks for taking t- thanks for taking a book. And this, for some reason, man, and I guess maybe it's just me, this one in Revelation or two that people just seem to go, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to get into some yeah. of that, you know. Well, I did too. Well, yeah, <laughs> but it, thanks. I mean, thank you for helping, you know, me look at this and go, this is very applicable to now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is a very applicable book to now and this is what's going on. But Danny, I'd, I'd just tell you that I've, you know, there's all kinds, especially Old Testament books, yeah. prophets and stuff. And, <laughs> and we read those sometimes just yeah. daily reading through and thinking, I'm not preaching through well, What in the world? Well, sometimes I'll read them and go, what in and the world was happening? In there, you just think, man, I, Lord, you, you've had, you've got a, a word in there for us right. and what's going on today. Yeah. And uh, it's just and that's the power of the word. Yeah. And uh, it's living and active. And uh, if we study it, it it has a, a message for us in so many ways. I have buddies they're preaching on odd books, and they're like, "Dude, I preached through this, and I just couldn't believe what was yeah. in there." Once I, and that's the same way with Joe, because sure. I, I mean, we read those middle chapters and think, "I don't know what to do with it," but there's some treasures in there. I had yeah two Old Testament survey classes, and. What, what you're talking about, you know, you get Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, you're like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Judges, of course, my favorite, yeah. well, you know, my, my probably my favorite Old Testament book. And uh, and then you get to like Habakkuk, and yeah. you're like, oh, oh. Yeah. And then you get buddy, to read, and you're like, oh, man. I got a buddy that just preached through that and just said that was the. One yeah, the I mean, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. it's full and of stuff. And you got me hungry to do Daniel next year. This yeah, we're doing that in the Sunday. We're, I'm, we got to time that right, though, because I don't want to be going, <laughs> I don't want to go our class going through it while you were too, but if you're going, we're going to try to get through, we've got Revelation four or five more chapters, and we've been going pretty quick through there. Um, that class is awesome. Yeah. I'm not trying to brag on my Sunday school class or anything, but um, everybody's just kind of eating it up. We're going through it. Um, yeah. You know, Good. trying to get a visual, visual of what's going on and, and looking from the perspective of John and, and all this stuff. Pretty pretty neat stuff. We've gotten through the seven year tribulation. Now we're getting to the battle, and oh, that's where this where we're at now. So, I'm again. Yep. So, how was your? Let's talk about your class for a minute. Yeah. So it's been good. We we did. Uh, uh, why would a good God send people to hell? Mm-hmm. And uh, last week Brandon taught on uh, why is there only one way. He talked about different religions and what they say is the way to heaven, and yet Christianity says there's one way, Jesus. This week we're going to talk about uh, why would God allow suffering, and uh, so it's been good. And uh, Brandon did a super job. He had the powerpoints, and oh no, kidding! He he made me look bad. <laughs> it's good, yeah, it's good. We've had good interaction. He's a pretty studious dude, though. He knows yeah, the stuff. Yeah, he's so. got some apologetic stuff. And, yeah, uh, yeah, he's he's good. So we got classes for just what whatever you're looking for on yep. nine thirty on Sunday mornings. We don't have powerpoints. We just basically read the verses and then kind of go through them. And Brandon's yeah, Brandon's. I'm going to pick up the game a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, but it's good. And, and well, maybe that's why he's there. He's there to get you to step it up yeah, a little yeah, bit. You know, know, put a little pressure that's on That's what you. I need, yeah. Um, so we've got, well, what's community stuff? We just got an email. Now, Now this may change by the time this thing airs, but we just got an email that the uh, Boone County kids are going back to school next week, four days. Four days. That's a big, that's a big deal. Yep, just pray for them. Uh, pray for them and pray for the teachers as they adjust to the new schedule for sure. And, yep. And, uh, On I'm, Thursday, we're doing lunch for the Burlington Elementary yep. teachers. If anybody yep. wants to help at 2 o'clock, come out. We'll yep. make some sandwiches for them. They have parent-teacher 
that night and uh and uh, we're we're into November and uh okay. Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's coming up to t- the turkey run the annual Turkey annual. five, yeah, the tenth annual five yeah. k turkey turkey run on Thanksgiving. That's a good time, man. It, you know, I, it. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll have to start in waves this year to keep everybody kind of separated, yeah. which is good. But, but man, it's fun. There's a bunch of people show up. Yeah. Last year was freezing. Yeah, and everybody's out there running, having a good time. And, and I got a revival the fifteenth through the eighteenth in Harrisburg, and I just appreciate your prayers for that. We had candy on the corner, and Miss Beth said there was maybe almost four hundred people. Is it? I hear that right. I would say at least there was. It's off. I didn't count. It was awesome. If if, uh, if the preacher was counting, it's probably a thousand people. But I, I was going to say, I, you know, preachers, a thousand people come through here. You know how preachers are. We were. Um, <laughs> we of course we dressed as Bob Ross, and everybody thought that we were the Gary Anderson table. <laughs> Even his own son That's stopped funny. by and asked if it, we were the Gary Anderson did, fan club. I did look over there one time and think. There's G- <laughs> and Gary was he did come, he did come over, took a picture with us. <laughs> that's good but uh, no it was a fun time man it was really and you know you, being creative our our staff and groups are just really done a really good job I'm yeah. not saying that because I'm part of it but done a really good job of just really going okay this is what we normally do let's let's kind of step outside the box they had the two they had the two trucks there Tina and I got a pizza and it was so good it was good, wasn't it? I didn't even get a funnel cake. Can you believe that? I was looking so much I forward to the funnel cake. I got funnel cake for you. I got it first. Did you? And Jenny got a pizza, so yeah, I took care of that for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Because I'm getting any. I was so excited Oreos, about it. Though, you know, uh, somebody gave me a half of one of their Oreos, though, so I did. I did get that, but I didn't pay for it. But uh, man, that pizza truck was that. Was that good. was the stuff. I'm, that's what I said. We could bring bring one out to the farm while we're hunting. Come out of the woods, grab a pizza. Nice to have a trailer with that. Be all right. <laughs> hey, thank you for joining us, man. We, we're uh, we're enjoying this, and we appreciate you tuning in every week. And- we would love some questions. We we will try to answer. I think, I, you know, I, I think that we do a really good job of breaking it down. But there's got to be somebody that's got some questions when you yeah. when you do. So if you take notes during the sermon, pay attention. But take yeah. notes. We got these three weeks. It's yeah. a little bit repetitive, and so we. Yeah, we probably. I don't think we've. We, I don't think we've overlooked anything. Um, that's going on here at church. All right. Doing good. Pray for us. I will. Right, Lord, thank you so much for this opportunity. Lord, just uh, thank you for for what this kind of means to us to be able to come together and and just discuss a little bit deeper, um, your word every week. Um, and thank you so much for for again taking a book that's that that's one of the oldest books and just showing us how applicable it is to us as as both people who suffer and Lord knows those people who, who are trying to comfort those people that suffer. And Lord, we just thank you so much for your son, Jesus is the answer to everything. And, um, even during this time where politics is going on and COVID is going on and all this other stuff, Lord, we just know that, that we are in your hands and that you're in control of everything. Lord, just continue to bless this church and the things that we've got going on and, and, uh, just help us to just continue to have more and more stuff to preach the gospel on our calendar. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And I know. Yeah, it's working. Thank you.